Hi everyone, it's Dr. Karen, the Women's Midlife Specialist, and we've got a really, really important set of labs today, and we're going to uh, call her JD. She's a young girl that really needs our help. 42 years old, I call that a girl. So 42 years old, and yikes, we are low in everything except cortisol. So she says that she's premenopausal, she's irregular. So she's likely really perimenopausal because irregular means that um, you're really closer to menopause. Now at 42 years old, now it can, it can range. I mean, it could be, you know, five years, it could be two years, but when you are irregular like this, and so low in hormones, you're really closer to menopause than uh, someone who is regular. Okay, so there are some interesting things that can actually put a woman at a higher risk of going into menopause earlier. And one of the things is Hashimoto's uh, hypothyroidism, uh, or maybe her mother had early menopause and it runs in the family, or even JD, if an major emotional or physical stressor in her life could actually set off menopause early. So any of these things can potentially cause earlier menopause. But what we have here is low estrogen, low progesterone. And even though both estrogen and progesterone are low, her ratio still, it still shows that she's estrogen dominant, very low testosterone. Her DHEA is even low, even though it doesn't show an L. I'm going to show you that in a moment because it's age dependent. And when we look at some Somebody who's 42 years old, 2.4 is low. So basically all the sex hormones are low. Cortisol in the morning is okay. She's not on any supplementation. So we really can help you here. So one more thing to look at, BMI is close to 31. So we know anything over 29 is obese. And we want to get that improved as well, because that has a lot to do with how we feel, because it has a lot to do with metabolic syndrome and the symptoms that are associated with that, which only worsens our adrenal function. And that is what is really problematic for us to feel good as a whole. So here Here's, our, here's some of our charts. You can see how low the estradiol is. We're, we're not even getting close to this graph where you should be. And we really want to be at a more optimal range of where a 30-year-old is. Uh, the progesterone is very low. Testosterone is very low. And when we look at DHEA, it also, age dependent, is low. And here's your cortisol about in the middle for uh, a 8 a.m. collection. Now let's look at symptoms. This might give us a little bit more. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Um, like I haven't seen this, right? I prepared this. So, but look at all these severe category. She's got quite a bit of of symptoms that she ranks as severe. And then she's got quite a bit that she ranks as moderate. So I would say this 42-year-old lovely lady is actually um, not so happy right now with this. So uh, even night sweats, she's got moderate hot flashes, but uh, severe night sweats, severe uh, vaginal dryness at 42, that's just not cool. Um, already facing some incontinence, that's both estrogen, testosterone, foggy thinking. There's a lot going going on here. And then if you go over here to the stress, I put this in a circle so we can zoom right over here. She doesn't rank that as severe. So she's got all these severe symptoms, but her stress is actually what she would say moderate. She's even got allergies and sensitivity to chemicals. So we could even be looking at other things too. You know, a lot of stuff going on in the diet. We could be thinking about leaky gut. Those kinds of things are, are pretty critical when you're looking at 
all of these severe symptoms. But also allergies can uh, be worsened with low testosterone and low DHEA because those hormones are so important for our immune system. If you think about how men have less sensitivity to chemicals, they have less allergies than women, and they have far less autoimmune processes, their testosterone plays a big role and their DHEA plays a big role in that. Okay, so if we go down... Oh, I just want to mention here, because when we talk about adrenals, momentarily, we're going to do that. When you look at mood swings, irritability, anxious, we got to keep that in mind when we talk about adrenal um, potential product if she wants to go that route. But all in all, if there was ever a lab screaming estrogen and progesterone deficiency, this is one. JD is, is doing quite a bit of suffering here. So her, she's, she's high in everything, but if we want to look at the top ones, I had to put the top five. I normally put the top three, but with uh, JD, we are our top one is estrogen progesterone deficiency. The one right next to it is low cortisol. But you know, when you're this young and you've got irregular periods and you are so low in all of your sex hormones, is it the chicken or the egg? Because her stress is rated as moderate. If her stress was rated as severe, I'd be like, well, we've got an obvious situation here. We've got low sex hormones and we've got a lot of stress going on in the life. But since she rates so many things in the severe category, but not her stress, I'm wondering, is it the chicken or the egg? So we've got low cortisol, but we also have symptoms of high cortisol too. That is right here. So that comes as number four. But look at this, number three, low androgens. So again, sex hormones, sex hormones. And this low androgens comes right after the low cortisol. Now, you may remember if you've been watching along and really been grasping a lot of the things that I've been saying, that low androgens, low cortisol, and low metabolism, those symptoms really clump together. So you look at this, if when you're looking at somebody holistically as a whole person, you've You've got to remember that the cortisol symptoms, the low androgen symptoms, and the low metabolism symptoms commonly fall together. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're going to do. So we've, we're likely in ovulatory cycles. What that means is no longer really ovulating or ovulating, uh, whichever way you want to say it, uh, not really likely ovulating uh, every month or even every other month and sometimes even every third month. Most of the time, women who are irregular, they're not really ovulating and their hormones never really get up to, to that normal level to allow them to ovulate. So, and they have this very irregular cycles. And this can go on for years. But the important thing is right now to help her balance these issues now and feel better. Might it start her ovulating again? It might. It might. So let's take a look at what I recommend for you, my darling, JD. Hormone heaven all the way hormone heaven all the way. I mean, this is very obvious to me. You've got this low of hormones. You're 42 years old. We need to support you with real hormones, bioidentical hormones. A lot, where I want to, you know, why am I making a big deal about this is because many conventional physicians would say, look, you're 42. You still have hormones. You're not through menopause yet. You're only 42. You shouldn't take any estrogen. You should only take progesterone. Some of them won't even know that. But in any event, you shouldn't take any estrogen. But that's simply not true. Why are we lumping all women into one category because they're 42 or because they're before menopause? If your hormones are low, you can supplement your hormones and get them to adequate levels. Don't go overboard. That's what hormone heaven, that's what all young hormones are about. Now, if you pump out way too much out of the bottle, yeah, you're going to be taking too much. So, but with you, JD, at 42 years old, two pumps twice a day for two weeks and 
increasing it to three pumps twice a day, and I'm going beyond what I normally recommend in general right off, it's because you're so low and you're so young, and I feel you really need this. So DHEA is also a huge factor here because your testosterone is so low, and you, my darling, might actually benefit from testosterone. And the only way we'll know is for you to t- use your DHEA. You want to do that five milligrams each uh, in the morning for about a month and then increase it to 10 milligrams. Now, this is is probably not going to be enough for you when I look at your labs, but it might be. So once things start improving, and I'm going to give you guidelines on when to retest because of what your labs uh, show us. This is one of those cases where you can't just start this and then not retest because of your age and because of how low they are and because there may need to be some tweaking. So let, we're going to move there in just a moment. So since your ranking, as I've been sort of alluding to, your stress is moderate, not severe, but you have so many other severe symptoms, I really highly suspect this is primarily sex hormone deficiency not adrenal deficiency, even though you have all these symptoms in all these other categories. I'm really walking out on a limb here, but it just feels that way to me. And I'd really like to focus on that and nutrition before anything else. So you can use an adrenal supplement if you want. It won't hurt you to use an adrenal supplement because of the, both this high and low um, adrenal uh, symptoms. And if you chose to do one, I would choose Adrena Vive because you don't want Adrenal because it's not low. You use this when your adrenal horm- uh, I'm sorry, when your cortisol is low, but Adrena Vive because you also have anxiety and irritability and mood swings. So that's another reason I generally don't recommend Adrenal when those things are still occurring. I recommend this with a low cortisol level. Okay, Um, the reason I'm not, I wouldn't recommend this one is because I think you need to go beyond what is in this in terms of nutrients. Adaptin all has the same as Adrena Vive in terms, pretty much the same, not everything, but pretty much the same for the adaptogens for your adrenal glands, but it also has the nutrients that your adrenal glands need. But I really want you to go beyond that and really look at a comprehensive nutrient pack, which also has omega-3s and anti-inflammatories. I suspect there's some anti- there's some inflammation going on as well because BMIs of this usually do have that involved as well. So what would be the timing of your hormone heaven? Because you're irregular, it would be six days a week and one day a week off. So with the cycles being irregular, this is the way to do it. The DHEA and nutrient supplements though are every day. If I'm right, and that this is primarily sex hormone deficiency, which is what seems to be screaming out, I suspect or I expect to have some good results. So good results fairly quickly. When I say fairly quickly, I usually see the results anywhere from two weeks to two months. Some of your symptoms are going to improve quickly and some are going to take a little longer because that's just the way our hormones work. Our hormones don't just suddenly change something. They change. It's like a well, it's like a snowball. It's like a, a you know, a snowball run, rolling down a hill. It improves, at, it makes one change and then that change makes another change and then that change makes another change. So it's a cascade of events that improve. But I do expect some improvements right away. So um, you may still potentially have irregular bleeding if you don't. Then, it, I mean, and you start having regular bleeding uh, and where you're cycling every month, that's indicating that you're actually 
ovulating again. So be careful because you can, remember, get pregnant. So you can get pregnant even with irregular cycles because you never know when you're going to ovulate. So most women who are having these irregular cycles are not ovulating. The hormones are just not high enough uh, to uh, allow you to ovulate, build an egg, uh, I'm sorry, mature an egg and release an egg but when you're having this irregular cycle, but every now and then you can. And I actually remember that with myself. I remember when that irregular cycle started, I could tell like every three or four months I was ovulating from one ovary, but not the other. And so, you know, you get that sort of feeling down there in the pelvis region on one side and you're like, gosh, I feel like I might be ovulating. And so, uh, but it would only be every few months. All right, so let's move um, um, to the next part. One more thing, this is important. I really do think this will give you a little bit more DHEA. You rank at your, you rate your your vaginal dryness as severe, not good. If you were 82 years old, I might say, well, that's not good because you'll get UTIs. But when you're 42 years old, there's a slew of reasons it's not good, including UTIs, but it's also not good for you as a woman. And so, you know, this this womanhood that we still should be feeling throughout most of our life really needs to be supported. So this is what I recommend there. I would use one suppository every other day for the first month and then de- see if you can decrease it to every two days. So, Now, um, when to test, when to retest, and then I'm going to talk about the diet just slightly. Now, if you're feeling 75% better in, in, say, six months from now, you don't need to retest, all right? Just keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. However, if you don't feel 75% better in six months, that's when I would recommend you retest. Now, if you don't feel better at all in three months, you need to retest. But I think you're going to be feeling a whole lot better. Now, why am I saying this? Because I really think that this is sex hormones and a lot of this is going to go away. If you want to save money on retesting because a lot of symptoms improve, but a lot don't, you may want to be looking at these other things, the adrenals, the thyroid, right? And because this is going to be improved. But if you're not 75% better in six months, because I think most of this is sex hormones, then um, retest. Nine months to a year, if you are feeling better in six months, because we still want to make sure everything's cool. So nine months to a year, if if you if in six months from now, you're like, wow, I'm 75% better. I'm just going to hang out here for a while. Then in, an, in another three to six months, that's when you want to retest because you're still in a very uh, fluctuating part of your um, womanhood. So you're... Um, going to be changing. But the dosing that I'm giving you could actually seriously carry you all the way through menopause. But I'm still recommending you go back and retest at least every year. Okay, so what about the the diet? Go back and look at one of these other videos I've done. I talked a lot about this diet that is important when you have a high BMI. We've got to move that downwards because it's going to make you feel a whole heck of a lot better. So these are some recommendations for you. And then, you know, if your doctor can do your thyroid, it, your labs for you, it would be really great. There's also ZRT has thyroid uh, through blood spot. And this is how I recommend people know uh, how their thyroid's going. If you're not feeling a whole lot better uh, in a few months, you need to look at this thyroid issue as well. And uh get your doc to do these labs or um, have CRT. If you're not in these optimal ranges, let's say you have normal thyroid results from your doctor or from CRT labs. If they're normal, meaning within the reference range, but they're not 
optimal, because I'm giving you optimal levels here. If they're not optimal, then this is a supplement that I would recommend that you take. The first thing I want to see you do, though, is really focus on that, that sex hormones and also get that DHEA up, get your nutrition up, get this diet improved. Let's see a little bit of that BMI come down. You are going to kick it. All right, JD, I hope this helps you and I hope this has helped other women as well. And I want to hear from you. Give me a thumbs up um, and let me know how you are and subscribe to my YouTube channel and I will see you later. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.